Hello, my name is CJ McMurray, and we are glad you are here. This is the Addiction Connection podcast, and we have, uh, I'm so excited today because we have a great uh, guest that we're going to be talking to, uh, Ryan Arrington. He is out in Bothell, Washington, correct? Not Oregon. Not Oregon. Not Oregon. Correct. And then I'm joined with my co-hosts, Mark Shaw and Jim Quigley. Uh, oh, Mark Wave. Kind of fun to say, my co-hosts. <laughs> so, so glad to be here. Uh, is, I don't know what Mark's doing right now. What are the... I was trying to point to Jim, but my camera, it's weird. So anyway. Okay. I'm oh, above you is... right now in my <laughs> screen, so. This oh, is yeah. going to be, this is going to be fun. So really, we're here really just to talk. This is all about Ryan Arrington. Oh this, boy. The show right here is all about Ryan. So no pressure, Ryan. Right. But uh, really just tell us a little bit. Uh, tell, just talk, tell the audience a little bit about yourself and, and then kind of what you do. And, and then we'll, we'll just ask you questions on the fly from there. Okay. Yeah. So um, I am originally from, from Georgia, from Southeast Georgia, I live most of my life. There, I uh, grew up in the church, and just basically, long story short, I uh, struggled with addiction for maybe 10 years or so, um, and went through several of the programs within the, the Addiction Connection. Uh, just you, whole, you can name them if you want. Yeah, yeah, I went, went through uh, his steps, and actually, I closed that place down. The residential <laughs> doors closed when I, when I was still there, so uh, no, with... Tim Brown there, and then went to um, the Damascus House, which is where I'm working now. I graduated from there, but still chose to uh, go back to my old life. And then the Damascus House, which is located in Bothell, Washington, not in Oregon, right? Correct. Bothell, Washington. That's right, correct. right. Just want to clarify that. And then uh, in September of 2018, I went into the Mission House, um, and that's where God truly transformed my heart. Um, started seeing uh, just true repentance and uh, a, a desire to not just add Jesus on as an accessory to my life, but to submit to him fully as, as my Lord. And obviously there's always stuff that he reveals that um, I need to continue to submit to him. But that was the first time where I kind of threw my hands up and truly surrendered and said, I, uh, my best efforts have gotten me here and I don't know what I'm doing. I need uh, I need to surrender to your Lordship, Jesus. And uh, yeah, that's when he truly saved me. And um, from then just continued to grow and worked at the mission house for about a year and a half, uh, whether it be in house manager or I interned under Oliver Underwood there for a little bit. And then uh, found myself moving to Winterset, Iowa, uh, the metropolis of Winterset. And uh, yeah, went and... Um, Worked there with CJ McMurray and Ben Ben Funkhauser, and wasn't planning on on working there full time. But three days in, God had different plans, and uh, went back into the house manager role. And uh, hey, hey, tell us one funny story about either CJ or Ben. Oh Just wow! One one funny story. Hmm. Remember, this is a family show. That's true. Let me think. <laughs> Oh, I got a, I got a recent, a very recent funny story about CJ. Um, so we Perfect. were, this, this is maybe even a month, month and a half ago. So we were talking on the phone. He was telling me about uh, some different things going on with guys who go to GCR, which is gospel centered recovery there and uh, talking about when the next meeting was and, and all that stuff. And he was in the car and it, it was obvious that he was in the car. And then all of a sudden you just hear this kind of, a different tone. And I'm like, what's, what's going on, CJ? And uh, he's like, well, I just did a, I can't remember. What did you, did you do a, an illegal U-turn or you? No. You had, brake, you had your brake lights out and you just noticed that a cop had just started following you. Oh yes. So yes. He, he, he realized that and he came to the place where he was supposed to be turning, but because he had whatever this issue was, I, I had a, a brake light out and I couldn't because hit the he, brakes. Because he had the brake light out, he wouldn't turn to where he was going to go because this cop was behind him. So he just kept going. And who knows how far he went. I think he went 
maybe ended up going into the next town a little bit <laughs> to get rid of the cop. <laughs> Old habits die hard, don't they? <laughs> oh, and this is public. <laughs> it is public knowledge. Oh, yeah, That's I cannot deny it. <laughs> is your brake light still out, CJ? Uh, you're breaking up. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get that fixed very soon, Jim. So there's been no change even after that experience. None. <laughs> okay, where were you, Ryan? <laughs> Where were you? <laughs> that that was exactly what I wanted. Thank you, Ryan, for that. No problem. <laughs> no, and uh, just was there's a house manager from May of 2020 at the refuge until uh, March of 2021. In in the midst of that, met the woman who would become my wife, and we got married. Where did uh, you meet her? Real quick. I met her at the, it was kind of a, a bunch of different places, but the seller coffee shop is, oh. is where we, we first met and, uh, yeah, and Bible study with church and, uh, GCR and, um, yeah, we got married May of 2021 and, um, Beautiful. yeah, an, another offshoot or just recent thing, part of my story with, um, my wife got pregnant and we were going to have uh, our first daughter and um, healthy pregnancy the entire time. And uh, unfortunately there was some complications during the, the labor and uh, our daughter Aria lost oxygen for about 10 minutes sometime in the midst of labor. And long story short, we, uh, for 10 days, she was fighting for her life from NICU to NICU and uh, ended up, uh, losing uh that battle but ultimately i know she's with christ uh but yeah so that was the most recent thing and just dealing with that and still still struggling with with grief and different things and having to trust god with those things that me and abby neither neither of us truly understand but trust that god's still good and um and in in the midst of all that had been talking to oliver underwood who had came on at the damascus house and needed some help, needed some more people on his team to, to help with uh, the Damascus house. And Abby and I had been praying with he and Lisa for um, several months about whether this was the right move for us to, to do. And, and even as we, we thought we would have our daughter with us, it was um, still, so it wasn't just something that kind of came up. We had been uh, talking with them for a while and um, ended up visiting up here in March and met with the board. And, uh, and now, now here I am. I accepted the job, and um, yeah, that's kind of in a nutshell what's happened over the course of my life. I've gotten to know Ryan pretty well, <laughs> but I want you guys to be able to ask any questions or thoughts that you have. I wanted to make a statement. Um, you know, since Ryan just shared about what he and Abby went through, I, I don't know Ryan very well. We've shook hands over at the summit before, and we wondered if you had ever visited Freedom Farm at one point, but I don't think you did. Um, no, but, uh, I think I tried, I called maybe one time, but never went. Yeah. Um, but Ryan did invite us, um, to pray with him and Abby and gave us updates to that, that website. That was a pretty wonderful thing that you had going on there. And, uh, I appreciated that man. Cause I, I mean, can't imagine what you guys were going through and you allowed us, there was prayers going up, uh, daily from North Carolina, my friend, um, when you were all the way over there in Iowa. So, and you know, we had Adam here during that time and, uh, Adam was definitely making sure we prayed for the Harringtons, um, every time we had a group gathering and whatnot. So appreciate you letting us walk through that with you in the way we could. And, um, and I got to tell the, the audience, um, it, it inspired me, um, how this young man and his wife dealt with it. Um, I can't imagine I would have, I don't know, you all, you know, you never know what's going to happen in a situation like that, but you were inspiring to me um, absolutely through that whole thing. So a guy in my Bible study Monday night um, and my, my, my wife worked in the labor and delivery. She's a nurse in labor and delivery. So she was praying for you. I was keeping her up to date the whole time, but um, this, this, this uh, young man and, his wife, uh, he had been 
sharing how excited he was. They're about to have their first child, and he's fairly a new believer from Georgia. The day of her scheduled delivery, they lost their 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 son, and uh, his heart just stopped beating, and uh, and just reminded me a lot of you guys, and kind of just the I guess the compassion that I had had gotten through walking through that with you guys was able to kind of really be, you know, share with, I mean, I w- wouldn't know what to do in those types of situations, but shared that with you guys and was sharing it with somebody just, he's still going through it. I mean, it just happened, I think a month ago. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we're, we're, I'm super thankful. That's what we saw, even though it's, it's just a lot harder than even, I guess people see we're, we're striving to, set our hearts on God and focus and, and put the truths in our mind, but it's still so difficult um, with me and, and Abby and she's obviously experiencing it and um, a lot of different ways that I can't even explain uh, just because she carried, carried her all that time. But yeah, it's, uh, but I, I say that to say we're super thankful and just saw God's care for us in that the church all over, the world was praying for us. I mean, our friends, the Bronx, Josh Bronk and, and Village Mercy, we know they were, they were praying for us too. And my dad uh, works for FCA and is connected with believers in, in Brazil. We know they were praying. And then up here between uh, the church here at Canyon Hills. And uh, yeah, so that was super cool and encouraging to see how the body surrounded us and continues to. We just did a podcast before getting on this one with you. And one of the things we were talking about was how we as believers struggle with all kinds of things, but we have God's truth there to kind of highlight how do we navigate our struggle. And you're, you, you guys are actively doing that. So very human that, Hey, I'm really struggling, but what am I looking towards? You know, God gives me his truth and that guiding light to, to hold on to grasp on and, I might need to be reminded of that every single minute of the day, but that's still um, what is going to uh, get us through what we're what we're facing. So you're living that out, man. Living example of that through something that you know nobody ever wants to deal with, something like that. Um, so appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you very much. And you know what else? You're an example of uh, to kind of change is that uh, those of us that work in this industry, now you do and CJ does, and Mark supports us through uh, all his efforts, but he's worked in the industry. But uh, we have we have these relationships with what we affectionately call repeat offenders here. And uh, I get people all the time like, hey man, like what are we gonna say is enough enough of this person, you know? And it's like, hey, look, if they qualify to be able to come in, I ain't ever gonna give up. And you're a living example of reason why, you know, I mean, you went to multiple places, all like-minded people, and it took a while, but the Lord finally cracked through that thick skull of yours and uh, that hard heart of yours and, yeah. uh, and got you and look at you now, you're, you know, the, the perfect kind of person to work in a kind of environment like this, because everybody here knows nobody signs up for this, uh, for any other reason, but they're called to it, right? So, and CJ knows maybe better than any of you how it's like. You can easily want to just say, "Man, like this guy's just—he's not getting it. He's not wanting to submit. So let's like I need to kick him out. Like kick that, him out. <laughs> that can get rid of him. Yeah, that can <laughs> be my bent. And and part of it is, I think, a, a good thing where like you don't want to take up beds for someone who is truly ready wanting to change but at the same time yeah like uh like you said so many different i a year ago or so i was like god just kind of caused me to reflect on and and realize all the people he had used throughout my walk or or throughout me coming to him or he him bringing me to himself like all the things that he slowly used um to eventually bring me to himself Amen. Amen. Mark, what do you do? You have any questions or thoughts? I know you do. I know my wife was. I have not seen her that upset and tearful in a long time than she was following 
those 10 days um, and that whole situation, you know, with you guys, Ryan, and um, <clears throat> it really touched me, you know, um, her especially, uh, just how you guys handled it and, um, you know, and the faith statements, because I think in our world today, people don't know what to do with suffering and with death and with, you know, here's something that, you know, there wasn't sin involved. There wasn't this, there wasn't that, you know, um, it's, it's just a product of suffering, you know, and in a fallen, broken world, you guys said, we're choosing to praise God and trust God, and believe God. And we don't understand why we, this is tragic, uh, but we are going to praise God and glorify him. And I just thought it was a, a beautiful thing that you guys were walking through and doing and are still doing um, with genuineness. You're not like saying, oh, this is a good thing. It's not a good thing. And that to me, bless me, because here you guys are early believers, especially Abby, and you guys are new to all this. And yet the faith uh, that you, you're expressing to me, I mean, it was, uh, it was unbelievable. And then you've got CJ, the, the church that CJ goes to, uh, and all the people supporting you and loving you guys. And that was a beautiful picture for me to kind of know about some of the inside stuff there too. To see the love that was poured out to us uh, by Redeemer Church and that community there um, between pastors and elders and, and deacons and ev the whole body there was incredible. There was no shortage of prayers and gifts. And it was, yeah, it was amazing. Um, and that was, that's kind of was the story of Abby and I's whole life together since when we started dating and even into marriage, the way that God provided for us and cared for us through uh, Redeemer made a mark on us. And it's, it shows, I mean, obviously everybody's got imperfections and there's things that um, aren't perfect. Yeah. What? It was, what? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was incredible. I was reading in Second Samuel 12, I'm sure you've read that, just how David handled the death of his child. And of course, his was a product of sin with Bathsheba and judgment. But he, he said in verse 22, while the child was still alive, I fasted and wept for I said, who knows whether the Lord will be gracious to me that the child may live. But now he's dead. Why should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he will not return to me. And I love that statement. I shall go to him, you know, in the next life. And for you, your daughter, um, you know, we believe she's with Jesus. And I know that it's not exactly clear. Not everybody agrees and this and that. You could quote different verses. Um, but David is saying, I shall go to him, but he will not return to me. So uh, I don't think it's error to think that she's in heaven with Jesus. Um even based on this and some other places in scripture. Yeah, that's the hope that we're, we're clinging to. We haven't read the book yet, but there's a MacArthur book that someone gave us that's about that. CJ, do you remember? He, the title? he, he has that though. The, what is the title of that? Oh, shoot. But he comes to that same, he comes to the same conclusion that you do, Mark, as well. Yeah. And there's the dark clouds, deep mercy. Discovery yeah, that's where you have looked at. We're going through that a little more than halfway done, but yeah, that's helpful. Yeah, he, he went through a very similar thing. So uh, yeah, he's and one thing. One thing I'm noticing, uh, which I think this is what God intends for it to be. I think about what's that that God comforts us with the comfort mm -hmm. we've been comforted with. Mm -hmm. And Second uh, Corinthians, yep, Second mm -hmm. Corinthians one. I'll, I'll go to that real quick. And someone actually. Uh, a friend of Abby's sister actually gave us that verse, like on a, um, like a framed thing the other day. So awesome. Let me go to that. Before you start yeah. reading that, the book yeah. from MacArthur is safe in the arms of God. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Safe so, in the arms of God. There it is. So second Corinthians one, 
uh, starting in verse three says, blessed be the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our afflictions so that we may, may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. Um, and I'm already noticing uh, just God softening my heart and causing me to be more sensitive towards other people who are experiencing stuff like we did with Luz and Aria. We heard um, the other day at a chapel here um, about a couple who was, she was 26 weeks pregnant and she fell down a flight of stairs and uh, lost her baby. And, um, I was broken. I've never, never really experienced that for someone else again. And part of it obviously was directed towards me, but just broke down in, in tears. And I think that's, even though that's not the, the whole picture maybe of what God's doing and don't know exactly, but God does want to use what we've experienced, what I've experienced and Abby has to, to enable us to help others uh, with the struggle that they're going through. Mm -hmm. I've heard it yep. said, never trust a man without a limp. And, mm -hmm. um, and I think about that, like when you've been through something, it does touch your heart. And I think it makes us better counselors. You're now in a ministry there at the Damascus house with Oliver, where these guys have gone through some really challenging things. They haven't had fathers or they've been abused by the people that should have protected them in their um, you know, and just the horrific things we hear about in counseling. I heard about one of the worst things I've ever heard this morning, you know, and, and I'm, I'm listening to this person tell me the story. And I'm, I mean, it was this morning. Uh, it was very sad. and I was heartbroken. And I'm glad that I was heartbroken because I don't want to be Mr. Cynic and skeptic. And I've heard this before. And let's hurry up and get through this story. And, you know, I don't want to be that guy in counseling. I want to be broken with people. I want to weep with people. Uh, and rejoice when people, you know, that's probably the harder part. It's rejoicing when people are rejoicing, but weeping with those who weep is, is difficult in counseling when you hear over and over and over the, the sad stories. And so God will redeem this. He is redeeming it. He's using it for good in 10,000 ways. We're aware of three of them or four of them, John Piper says, you know, but uh, we, God is doing 10,000 good things through this that we may not ever see, but we are mm. confident in him and his character. And I just appreciate how you guys have handled it. And I'm not saying that to puff you up because even that the glory goes to God and how he sustained you. But I do appreciate your faithfulness, the choices you've made and the faith statements and Abby too. I mean, she's just precious um, yeah. to, to see you guys handle this. It's just been, it's been wonderful not that you've gone through it, but how you've handled it has been wonderful. Amen. I agree. You know, like I even think just kind of backtracking a little bit to just your story, Ryan, in general and how, I mean, just, it was, it was, it was a messy path in a lot of ways. You probably have a better uh, overview of a lot of the, the addiction connection programs than most you know, you've seen, you've been in Washington, you've been in Iowa, you've been in Georgia, like you've kind of, and then you got a lot of experience that way, but I, it's just neat to see how God is using it. And anytime I share about Ryan and Abby, you had these plans in your mind uh, when you came to Iowa, even you were going to hang out for a while and then go to South Africa and help Josh Brunk. That those were your plans. Mm -hmm. And then look at everything that God did. Not that there wasn't pain in the offering. I mean, wow. Maybe talk about that a little bit. Yeah. I mean, the, the first place that I think of that God basically moves the heart of the King, like water, like he can turn it. Yeah. The King's heart is like streams of water. Proverbs 21, yeah. one. I know that. Oh. Yep. Yep. Um, ding, ding. <laughs> correct. <laughs> CJ, CJ will give you a prize at the end. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm waiting. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, even going into the Mission House, uh, which was the last program that I went through, I had decided finally that, okay, maybe I do need some more help because I had been like, I just need to get sober. Like, I know I've done all these programs before. I don't really need it. Um, 
And so I wanted help, but again, I wanted help my way. Uh, I wanted to go back to the Damascus house because it was familiar to me. I actually knew some people there. I kind of knew how the program went, texted Kevin, and he was basically like, let me talk to the board. And the board decided uh, that it was too familiar for me, that they thought it would be better that I go to the mission house, which is where Oliver was at that time. Um, and I did not. I didn't want that at all. I wasn't interested, not even a little bit. Like I was, I was like, okay, like I'm not, apparently I'm not supposed to go to a program then because I'm not going there. The things that God can use, funny things to soften my heart in an instant. I heard that there was one guy who was there at the mission house who I had some type, I just knew who he was. We had no real relationship. He wasn't even a friend, but in me hearing that he was there, all of a sudden I turned from, I will not go there to, okay, maybe I'll go. And it's Mm. just, my dad will still say, even to this day, if if you would ask him now, he's like, it's a miracle that Ryan got on the plane to even go to the mission house. Cause I was so adamantly opposed to going. I had, I had been talking to uh, a girl who was from Vietnam back before I was went into the, the mission house. And I, had all the plans in the world to go and visit her in Vietnam. So I, I didn't have a passport at all. Got a passport, was ready. So my plan was, okay, I'm going to go through this program that I'm going, I'm heading straight for Vietnam. But the passport that I got that I had planned on using to go to Vietnam, that's what God used to allow me to go to South Africa and visit Josh Brunk. So I thought I was doing one thing with it. And it's just, it's remarkable. Uh, and yeah, that's the second one. And then the the final one really is what you said. I mean, I was planning on just a little, little stop, brief stop from May to November in Iowa. I definitely with a sane mind wasn't planning on going through an Iowa winter, not even one. Um, <laughs> but uh, God had other plans and COVID happened and uh, couldn't fly anywhere. And then, like I said, day three of being in Iowa, Hey, will you be the house manager? So I was like, I guess so. Here to do whatever God wants me to do. So, um, yeah. yeah. The only thing that. worse, the only thing worse than an Iowa winner, is having to be with C.J. McMurray in an Iowa winner. I mean, that's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the only true. thing worse. Wow. That's We're, true. <laughs> no. So at, at the I feel the love. Got, I feel the love. It's awesome. <laughs> It got to the point uh, because I had never really driven in or never driven in snow, the refuge, there's kind of like a hill uh, going up to the refuge. And so like, I would always, I had this in my first Iowa winter, I had a uh, like a 90, 99 or 2000 F one fifty stick shift (laughs) rear wheel drive. (laughs) And so I would just, I kept getting stuck at the bottom of the driveway with the snow. I couldn't get up and it got to the point where I would just park it down there. I wouldn't, and I'd wait for, Hey, one of you guys, can you pull it up? Cause I can't get it up. It's just. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, so keep- and, and Tim Brown keep- told me and CJ, you alluded to this, but Ryan, um, <laughs> I mean, if you want to talk about it, the addiction connection, story. I mean, Ryan, you were impacted by all these guys that, you know, Tim Brown discipled, you know, Uh, that's really cool. Yeah, it is. And I still, I love Tim so much and he's uh, somebody who I now and for the rest of my life, it's somebody I'm going to go to for counsel and wisdom and help and encouragement and just a friend. Love Tim so much. And you guys are making me feel terrible right now because Tim Brown texted me yesterday and I never responded to him. <laughs> oh, I feel like no. a jerk. You should. Yeah. What are right, the dates of our, Mark, what are the dates of our summit, by the way? That's what he's asking me. He's like, what are the dates of the he summit? He doesn't know the dates of our summit? Hey, Man, you know, that needs to be etched in stone in his head. I mean, you know, that's kind of... Yeah, I'm gonna obviously, I don't him. remember what they are, so... <laughs> no, no, like, November 3rd fourth and fifth it's a thursday friday saturday can i talk just a second about the summit yeah Yeah. so we're gonna have brad bigney kick it off where our worship team at grace is then gonna 
do lead us in music and worship, you know, worship and praise through music for about an hour. And then we're going to break up into our, our discussion groups. I'm going to take on the newbies. So anybody new to the summit this year, they'll be in my discussion group. And then you guys will all lead discussion groups. And we will actually have a guest speaker who um, speaks in another language, American Sign Language. Kevin Hamilton is going to speak to us through an interpreter. Interpreter will tell us what he's saying because I don't speak American Sign Language. And Kevin Hamilton and the Deaf Biblical Counseling Group will actually be here during that time, and they'll have their own discussion group, and they'll be able to communicate in their own language. So he'll speak to us, and then uh, we'll have some breakout topics where different people are going to teach. Uh, it's going to be a really cool summit this year, and so people won't want to miss it. November 3rd, 4th, and 5th, Florence, Kentucky, Grace Fellowship Church, B, what is the, B Square. What is the theme? The theme. Oh, you would ask me that. I just uh, sent it to Shirley. I, I'll right. I'll talk about that in another podcast. Okay. All right. Hey, we haven't really told had Ryan. I mean, we all kind of know what the Damascus House is, but why yeah. don't you why don't you Damascus, tell us? I like the Damascus House. How the Damascus House operates? It's you know, it's not exactly the same as as uh, as the Refuge, not the same as Freedom Farm. You know, how are you similar? How are you different? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm um, obviously this is you have better counselors, right? Than <laughs> right. Right. Are, and, and by the way, we already know how terrible your your boss is, so you don't have to talk about Oliver. <laughs> the guys work for the house here, um, and that's primarily what I've been doing right now is learning the the work ministry side and uh, basically talking to talking to customers and and scheduling jobs um, to send the guys out. Um, multiple vehicles at the house and tools and guys go on uh, to different job sites. But um, so the day, the day starts kind of similar. The guys wake up early in the morning and they're uh, doing their, their quiet time. And uh, whether it's first month doing uh, writing out the Proverbs or uh, I think they go into walk of repentance by Steve Gallagher um, after that. Um, getting stuff ready for the day, getting, getting lunch ready and, uh, breakfast and showers and all that. And then they'll have a uh, group prayer time uh, for 30, 45 minutes together. Um, and then each morning there's a different teacher that comes, or usually it's a different teacher uh, and they have another kind of devotional time uh, up until nine 30 or so get assigned their jobs for the day, wherever they're going. And, and typically their work day is from about 10 30 to four 30. So it's not a full, full day's work, but it's, it's enough to uh, keep them busy and um, allow them to get out in the community. And then there's also, and it seems to be that Damascus House is heading more and more this way, just a real focus on widows within the community and especially uh, widows from Canyon Hills Church. And I think that's the area that the uh, work ministry is going to be heading with just really trying to, that being the focus um, mm -hmm. is... I like that serving the widows. The guys really enjoy that. And these ladies who haven't had something done, you know, for, for years since their husbands died or something, um, get to see that and get the benefit of that. And then the guys come home from, from work and, uh, usually have some free time. Uh, one guy is, uh, usually responsible for cooking for the night, which I know is similar with, uh, the refuge and, and even how the mission house was before. And they eat dinner together. And then Monday through, Thursday, uh, they have studies each night, whether it's guys coming into the, um, into the house to teach, or they go to the church for a couple of studies. In fact, their study tonight, um, is up at the church and they're going through next steps, uh, from you, Mark. So, yeah, that stuff's all right. Yeah. It's not bad. <laughs> and how long, how long is the, the commitment to go to the Damascus house? It is six six to nine months, so I'm I'm not completely sure about this, but if it's the same, and I'm pretty sure it is, at around the five or five and a half month mark, they kind of reevaluate the guys, and I know they used to like bring them before the board, and then they 
kind of ex- examine their whole their their stay there and where they're at and what's what's been going on and and future plans and all that and then from there decide hey is this guy going to be ready at about the six months or do we want to ask him if he'll stay for another month or so and uh, then kind of go from there but then recently there's been some new things that um, Oliver's been adding in um, called the SLT program, the Ser- servant leadership training program. So I don't know if y'all have experienced this. I've been a product of why this system didn't work. Uh, but the grad, the grad program for, for guys it never in all the places I've been, it's always seemed to kind of be neglected or just doesn't go well. Those guys don't get the accountability maybe that they need, or they're just, they're kind of, set free and they're it just doesn't go well so there was a grad house here um but that's been changed basically morphed into this servant leadership training program uh which basically allows damascus house to vet the guys who come in so it's not just like okay i'm done with the program i don't have anywhere to go just throw me in the grad house it's guys who want to continue to serve and grow and they uh they serve at the house for um three days a week being involved with studies and different stuff and then get like a part-time job and they're actually paid for uh the slt program so they get room and board and a little bit of pay each month and it allows them to um have a safe place to go but also to serve that's the focus is and i think one of the requirements is that they at least start on the their cabc um tac training and uh, so i like that model because uh, to me the only way a grad a grad situation can work is if you if that's a program in and of itself that's at least from what i've seen Mm -hmm. yeah and if someone has a loved one um you guys serve males and females now uh women's house is going to be open or the plan to open is september 1st okay and and what is that uh, besides going through the application process and everything um, uh, and what does that cost the family to send a loved one there? It's either just a one-time 500 or a thousand, uh, dollar fee and that's it. And I'm assuming the women's is going to be exactly the same. Um, For six to nine months of biblically based Christ-centered help. That's yeah. amazing. Right. Yeah. In because ba- they work in, ba- in Bothell, Washington, by the Bothell, way, Bothell, not, Washington, not Washington. Oregon. Well, and I love it that they work, they do a little bit of work, but that's, that's their way of giving back and and they have skin in the game they're committed that's a good thing that's yeah. yeah i love it mark what do you think you have any last you want to put a bow on this well thing? i looked up so i looked up the uh theme for the summit and um and this your own working. summit you mean yeah, my own summit hosting <laughs> that i should know you know i can't remember the name of some of my books so i mean you know we've done this theme before but i just think we have to do it over and over i, I need this so mm-hmm. the theme is avoiding burnout and learning perseverance in addiction ministry mm-hmm. so i wanted the the negative avoiding burnout but i also wanted the positive learning perseverance how do we persevere in what God's called us to do. And Brad is going to kick us off. But then the breakout topics that people get to choose, those will be on a variety of things. So I'm excited about having those available this year too. So we'll have a whole lot of teaching time, a whole lot of discussion group time, and just a few plenaries. Uh, But I'm really excited about hearing Kevin Hamilton, uh, what he has to say to us about ministering to the deaf and those that are truly um, you know, disabled and yet they don't see it that way. I mean, he's got a whole network of deaf biblical counselors around the world. And I think a lady from Spain is going to fly in to be a part of this. Uh, and she's deaf and she's doing counseling and all that. So we're talking about, it's really cool. Kevin is a leader of leaders and he's been a friend of mine for 10 years or so. And I just really love this man and what God's called him to do. So, uh, so yeah, I'm pretty excited about that, but I'm also excited about Ryan Arrington and him being at the Damascus house in Bothell, Washington, Jim. Bothell, Washington. Yes. I, have, Don, I still Oregon. have mixed, I still have mixed feelings about him being in Bothell, Washington. Yeah, you, you, uh, we understand that, but right. you know, the kingdom is about, uh, 
about training about, and letting people go. And yeah, yeah. I know yeah. you guys miss him. You yeah. probably miss Abby more than you miss him, but you miss him. Well, so. we miss them both. They're kind of a, we get, you get, you get both. You get one, yeah. you get the package, other. Package deal. That's the, <laughs> yes, there she is. There was Abby. <laughs> a guest appearance. I love it. You, one of these times she would probably be, we should have her on here sometime and share her story. Would yeah. all for we need to highlight some testimonies in here sometime. So. How are we going to close, put a bow on this thing already? You're the, you're the MC baby. You're the, you're the one you got to close it out. It's hard, isn't it? It's hard. You wanted this CJ. <laughs> <laughs> hey Jim, this is where you gotta, you gotta come in and. I don't have to do anything. I am the co-host. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for joining the addiction connection podcast. And we will see you next week. God bless. And. Have a good day. <laughs> you should have waved. You should have waved at the end there, CJ. Like, <laughs> Awkward wave. <laughs> Awkward wave at the end. Hey, how about Mike? How about Mark going like this? There you go. On the, on the when, did I, when did I even do that in the podcast? Like they capture me doing that. <laughs> I, I, I didn't even do that. Like I think they put fake hands up. You know, <laughs> and that wasn't me. Oh man! What do I and do? You guys are always trying to get me doing. <laughs> That's what I. Was yeah. my hand on my face. I my jazz hands. hands. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> my jazz hands. Jazz hands. Oh. Well, yeah. Thank you guys, and uh, I'm glad you're out there. I mean, uh, I know Oliver's thrilled to have you guys, and Lisa too. It's such a lonely ministry, you know, and. <sighs> It's so hard, you know, so you, 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 you need a community, you need people that you trust. Um, uh, ministry period is that way. You got to have people you trust. So. Yeah.